Yeah, jump in. I mean, <clears throat> what, what are your thoughts? Are you well, I'm, I'm looking at it. I mean, I went up and looked at the, the files and tried to figure it out from a legal standpoint because I'm an attorney, and I think that I, I, I think that there's uh, also from a Rhode Island constitutional base. I mean, maybe the law will be made without looking at the Rhode Island Constitution. <laughs> it's happened before. <laughs> and the, yeah, I mean, the judges might ignore it uh, because – Traditionally, the Supreme Court of Rhode Island has given the great plenary power to the General Assembly to do whatever they want. But in the pension cases, they raise the issue of ex post facto and obligations, uh, and impairment of obligations of contract. Now, <clears throat> generally in, in the United States, mostly from the late 1800s, ex post facto has only really been applied to criminal matters. But it doesn't say criminal or civil ex post facto. And if you look back at the history of ex post facto, it's for injury. It's not necessarily for criminal injury. Right. And that being in Article, excuse me, Article One, Section Twelve of the Constitution, coupled with the provision of impairment of contracts, I think makes it more certain that it probably has to do with civil as well as criminal. Mm -hmm. And I also argue that since Rhode Island's constitution is supposedly expansive in terms of liberty and rights, uh, I don't think that's, that's serving as a restriction of criminal only. And as I said, if it were criminal in nature, I would expect it to be located somewhere in like the bail or you know habeas corpus or right. all those provisions. Um, it's not. It's located in, in Article 1, Section 12, which deals with there shall be no ex post facto law passed and they, you know, the, the right of contract shall not be impaired. Uh, that seems pretty clear guidance to me. As I said, I don't, I don't like to pay as much as the next guy, but what's right is right. And if we want to operate a government on fallacy and lie and you know what we want to make is half-truth or truth as, it, as we see it, then be my guest. But I, I don't want to participate in that. Hmm. Do you see a wave of bankruptcies, municipal bankruptcies, hitting the state? I see a lot of municipal problems. Um, they may or may not be averted. Um, you know, I think that fiscal measures, you know, restrictive fiscal measures probably can avert some of them. All of them, no. Is it the worst thing for, you know, to start fresh? Well, municipal corporations being different from a state, municipal corporations can successfully survive bankruptcies. I mean, we're looking at the bankruptcies of Detroit or we're looking at, you know, other communities that have done it. It's, in any bankruptcy, I always feel that it may or may not be in the best interest. Um, you have to look at the specifics case by case. So, uh, yeah, I think that we'll see. I think we'll see a couple more in Rhode Island before the end of it all. We've got only a few minutes left, and I want to get into our lightning round. But okay. I, again, I want to thank Bob Healy. You are listening to the Coalition on Talk Radio on AM 790, coalitionradio.us. Um, thank you for coming in. Uh, this has been a great. As, as The best shows are the ones where we want to keep going on. For, I did spend another hour to here with you. Um, lightning round. Just, just a quick response to a sure. couple a couple of questions. Uh, I'm issues. really bad with yes, no, because. No, no, you said death penalty. Uh, death penalty is. I I have no problem enforcing it if it becomes a law of the land. Okay. Casino gambling. Uh, casino gambling. Um, I think gambling is a tax on those who have bad math skills. Um, mm -hmm. If people want to gamble, it's their right to do that. I think it's a bad bet. Driver's license for illegal immigrants. I think the the policy is somewhere in the middle. I don't think that they should have full driver's licenses, which generally tend to be in the form of a valid identification. However, I think, uh, as I've written about, and I think it's being published today on the website, I think that there's a middle ground where you issue, much like an international driver's license, uh, the concept of giving a, a piece of document that says that you have been certified to be able to drive on the highways of the state because it's not a right, it's a privilege. And also because uh, when you get into an accident, you may not have insurance. This would guarantee that you have insurance. So it would kind of get a solution to a problem that really has both sides very divisive. Deep water wind. Deep water wind, I probably would not have courted it as much as Mr. Kacheri had. Mm -hmm. Anything to do to stop it at this point? I would have to look at that. I, I really would. I can't formulate an opinion on that. Well, that brings us to the end of our show. Again, coalitionradio.us. We should have the podcast up there in the next uh, within the next 24 hours. Twitter.com slash coalition underscore radio. 
Bob. Thanks for coming in. Thanks good luck in the me. good luck in the election. Yeah, appreciate it. At this point in the show, I'll disclose I am a fan. I am voting for you, oh. and my artistic daughter will be working on a sign. Very good. God bless. Have a great week. We'll be back next week. We may have a debate next week if Nick Hill has got some uh, cojones. <laughs> You've been listening to The Coalition on AM Talk Radio. Have a great week. Thank you.